life shows a curse is on it. And God wants to remove the curse by your obedience. Don't look at me like that. Is that true or not? Don't lie to yourself. Oh. Psalms 119. I just happened to glance down here. David praying. He said, I weep with grief. So he was having some hard times. Encourage me by your word. Everything comes back to the word. Encourage me with your word. Now listen to this statement. Keep me from lying to myself. Oh my Lord. He could have wrote all day long. I would have said that, couldn't he? I remember we always say the biggest lie is when you lie to yourself. He's asking God to help him not to lie to himself because he's in a circumstance to make excuses for himself. Just go to the Word and let the Word deliver you and set you free by the Holy Spirit. Keep me, give me the privilege of knowing your law or your Word. My prayer tonight for this congregation is that revelation will come like never before, that God will give you the privilege of knowing him face to face like you've never known him, that this season has been set by God and it's a, it's a God season to bring you closer to him so that you might manifest in this earth great fruit that he'll get great glory. I believe that with all my heart. I believe revival has broke out in the White Mountains and it started right here, you see. So let's, let's make a declaration. Who was it? Now, June said that she, she's not here, but uh, she got a rebate on something she'd never knew was coming. And somebody else told me, oh, yes, that you found money, didn't you? You found money. Uh, you see, people make light of the supernatural. Why make light of the supernatural? The supernatural is all around us. It's in us. Let's give the word a chance to manifest something supernatural that God can get some glory. I mean, don't y'all believe that? Praise the Lord. Well, let's make a declaration then. Lift your seed up. Bring your seed into the storehouse. Offer them up to the high priest of that day, which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay, are y'all ready? As we give today's offering, we're believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, businesses and better businesses, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money and bills paid off and debts demolished and royalties received, and supernatural increase on investments made and souls for our inheritance. It's offering time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, bring her on down.
Scott. I wouldn't want to be anywhere but in the house. Would you? I mean, this is the place. This is where it's happening. This is where spiritual insight comes to the believer to motivate you when you get home to dig in this book to get at all those nuggets of truth that will set you free. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, hey, amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> oh, praise God. Is this working? Y'all heard the song, Corina, Corina. Corina, come up here. She got a testimony. And it's really relating to her declarations, her and Bill. This story kind of reminds me of Bill. About three months ago, um, we had some opportunity. Bill's father had passed away, and there was some land that was for his inheritance. Uh, we knew we were sitting on seed. And so when it when it time to... give a tenth into our church at the time. So we said, okay, let's let's give a tenth. So we gave a tenth. We put it out there. On that Sunday, on that particular Sunday that we gave our tithe, our, our tenth, um, there was a person, an anonymous person that says, whatever you give today, they would double it. So our money was doubled as far as Amen. giving in. But it, then I went home. Bill wasn't with me. I went home. He had gotten a call from his sister and said the land sale fell through. It did not go through. Not a problem. We gave. We, it was with joy. It was for a new building. So we were like, absolutely. And then about three months ago, about two months ago, the land was back up for sale. It was just slow, slow, slow. About three weeks ago, three, four weeks ago, we found out that the land sold and that he received an inheritance Quite a good amount of money. Amen. <laughs> and so we had made this declaration. We've been coming, making this declaration. It didn't happen then. It happened now. Amen. It didn't happen in that house. It happened in this house. Amen. Can I just point that out? So praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. Get in the house. There's an anointing on the house to prosper and to operate in the wisdom of God. And uh, and so that's wonderful. I, uh, do the children need to go? Children, y'all can be dismissed. Y'all can go to your class. I was uh, thinking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I'm going to go in and we're going to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit, about Joel, about Acts in just a minute. But I was thinking, and I'm going to develop a whole series on this, about the difference between Abraham and Isaac. If you remember, there was a drought and there was a problem and Abraham had to go to Egypt, which signified the world system to get his food. There was a drought and God let him go that because he was new with God. And so God said, okay, you go down into Egypt. We've been in Egypt for years receiving our food and our sustenance from a bell system which is set up and it's crashed now. I mean, they even passed new regulations today that the SEC is not even regulated really anymore. And they give them a whole new book that no one can request any kind of information. And so that system is getting tarnished pretty good. Well, here come, and the whole deal was funny. Abraham, you know, tried to give Sarah away as his sister, and the king found out about it, and it was really his wife, and the king got mad, and... And, you know, this guy, you know, Abraham's a father of faith, but he pulled some pretty good stunts down the road there with what he was learning, didn't he? I mean, he's trying to give his wife a way to have peace with the king. That's a man of faith, isn't it? But he was early on. So, uh, so, so, so later on, Isaac got in the same trouble. They had another drought, another generation, another season of God, but God wouldn't let Isaac go to Egypt. 
He wouldn't let him go to the world system. He required Isaac to walk by faith and to put total trust in him to break the drought, to break the situation, to bring him to a new place.